A person who enters profession, he is put to training in a systematic way so that he becomes a professional and transacts in the world of profession very properly and he is taken well in the field of his or her profession. So similarly, you are now in this profession, you have intentions to be in this profession of teaching. So, mandatory and obligatory on your part, if you are serious about this, about the profession, you have to go under the training. You are undergoing the training, that is the theoretical part of it. And how much interest you are showing in the academic transaction that you know and we also know. That is a secret between you and we don't want to share it with our guests. Anyway, we are here, we have tried or at most that you become ideal teachers. Not the ideal but the, but the teachers who are taken well in this society, in, the, in this profession. Because this is the age of the competition. You see everywhere no government jobs, jobs are not available. You have to go in the private sector and in the private sector the professionals are taken not like uh, the approaches and the money. They take only those people who are really professionals, who know how to transact the things. So you see uh, the private in the private sector the candidates who apply are put to rigorous interview and other things whatever whatever system there. So, if you want to be the teacher, my personally I feel, if you are very serious about this micro teaching, I assure you that you will be ideal teachers and when you go in the field, you will be taken there. So, be serious about it. We have invited Dr. Mahan Sai, he is professor in college of education, an expert in this field. We have invited him it will be transacting about this micro teaching and I request Professor Sambat and then at the end he will be providing you 15 minutes if you have any clarification, if you have any questions he will be interacting with you to clear if you have any doubts but you will during this uh, during the deliberations you will point out the questions or the doubts you have about it Note the questions, note the doubts, and at the end, ask those questions or clear, get the doubts cleared by over the professor. So I don't want to take because he is here with us up to one. So I want to please. You're straight. Then you have to have practiced in the hospital, internship. Then you can be labeled as a doctor. So these are the skills which provide it through the process of education and then education as a product and then education as a process. Education is a lifelong process. It is a lifelong process because it makes every individual fit to live in a society. When it makes every individual fit to live in a society means actually human being is always in a contributing way. He is always trying to contribute to the society. So far as this education is concerned, there must be certain functions of a teacher as well. You are the aspirant teachers, you must have certain functions. You know the understanding that we have to produce something from the child, we have to care the child, then we have to use certain skills and we have to use certain processes inside the education. But you know, education and a teacher has a positive relationship. I said that teacher is not only a human being, teacher can be an environment as well. Teacher can be a book which are, you are reading at your home, so the book becomes your teacher. But what are the functions, what are the basic functions of a teacher? I will talk about only two functions. In psychology, we have two laws of intelligence. We have two laws of intelligence. Can you name them? In psychology, we have two laws of intelligence. These are known as laws of intelligence. Have you heard about them? I will not have. One. Law of psychic reluctance. Is number one law. 
law of psychic reluctance. Law of creative synthesis. These are the two laws. Law of psychic reluctance and the law of creative synthesis. So far as this law of psychic reluctance is concerned, it is just like a tunnel vision. What we are having. Do you know what is tunnel vision? Have you ever seen a pipe? Pipe mm -hmm. This is known as tunnel vision. In intelligence, according to Freeman, an intelligent person is having three qualities. An intellectual person who is more intelligent is having three qualities. Number one quality is ability to learn. He is having ability to learn. It is not conditioning. There is a difference between conditioning and learning. It is ability to learn. First quality of an intellectual, more intelligent person is that he is able to learn. Ability to learn and then ability to think. But this thinking is always abstract. This thinking is always abstract. You are always thinking in abstract terms. And if you think abstractly, means you are more intelligent than others. So ability to learn Ability to think and then third, ability to adjust. Ability to adjust means you are more able to adjust in any environment. So more adjusted you are means more intelligent you are. So far as this law of psychic reluctance is concerned, <laughs> means you are not having ability to either learn nor ability to synthesis. To develop creative synthesis in a child. It is the basic function of education. So teacher has to play a role. You are the aspirant teachers. You are going to teach inside the classrooms. You are going to teach to the students. But you know, student, you will always find students in this parameter. You will always find students in this area. But you have to convert them from this area to this area. You know, what is synthesis? And then what is this creativity? Creativity is creation of something from nothing. Creation of something from nothing. This is creativity. Creativity and intelligence has correlation. But as a teacher, you have to develop those skills in a student in which he is able to create something from nothing. I gave an example. There was a point from Kashmir. Point from Kashmir. Once he thought that I should have visited this Dal Lake. Let's have sand in the Dal Lake. Okay? He asked a shikara wala, mujhe sand kara. Okay? Uske baad, what happened? Before he tried on the shikara, he saw a lady, beautiful lady, cleaning the utensils on the bank of that. Simple. Then he saw that there were certain lotus flowers in front. Simple. Is it ordinary or is it creative? Huh? Is it ordinary? Shkarawala says, hey, let's move for sad. He said, no. At the point, I have to say something. And then he said in Kashmiri, what he said? Dal kinaras pet behit ak pari patar basan. Simple. Dal kinaras pet behit ak pari patar basan. Tasne dinar bapat adhumas kamal khasa. Isn't it clear? Yes. <laughs> to create something from nothing is the creativity. As a teacher, you have to develop these things inside a student. Similarly, Alama Iqbal alayhi rahman was walking once. Ek jarna jarna tha. Jarnay mein 
एक गुलाब की पहली गिर गई थी एक गुलाब खिला हुआ था और पानी के बहाव बहाव से थरथराहट हो रही थी अलामा इकबाल ने एक शेर कहा सिंपल सिचुएशन है पानी को छू रही है जुग जुग की गुल की टहनी जैसे कसीन कोई आई न देखता हो इट इज वन ऑफ द अमेजिंग थिंग्स दैट एवरी ह्यूमन कैन नॉट बी डेवलप्ड बट एज अ टीचर यू हैव अ रोल एंड यू हैव अ रोल टू डेवलप क्रिएटिविटी अमंग द स्टूडेंट्स इवन इफ यू आर नॉट सक्सेडेड बट यू हैव टू फाइट बिकॉज़ देयर इज लॉ ऑफ साइकिल रिलेटेंस दैट ऑलवेज 90% Uh, if you look from the uh, normal curve point of view, then we have 68 percent people who belong to this, and only 16 percent people belong to this. But you have to make sure that even if I can't create 100 percent in this area, but still 50 percent I must create as a teacher. So if you create 50 percent, means you are a successful teacher. It's creativity. Then what is synthesis? Again here. What is synthesis? It is, I guess, taught to be. It might might be in 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 your if I ask you you just tell me what's it? My drawing is not good, what's it? What is it? Apple. Apple. Orange. What is it, sir? Apple. What can be? Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Yes. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Is it your color, sir? No, it's a figure. It's a figure of some fruit. Is it figure of some fruit? But yes, you are correct. But I must tell you that I have never seen a fruit which has its cut hair. I have never seen a fruit which not has its cut hair. I have not never seen a fruit which has its cut hair. Leaves are intact. But I'm not connected. Have you ever seen? No. The completions which are present in the picture, you make them complete in your mind. Then you present a view. This is a fruit. It, whether it is an orange, whether it is an apple, whether it is a pomegranate, whatever it is, it is nothing. It's a picture. According to Gestalt's view, you cannot think about your parent, about your father, about your mother, unless you not make a picture of your father and mother in your mind. So whenever I say what is it, you make a picture, apple picture, apple. So some might have uh, made a picture of red apple, some might have yellow apple. But actually, so far as this law of creative synthesis is concerned, you have to develop creativity and then you have to synthesize. So far as synthesize is concerned, it is divergence. It is divergence. You have to think each and every angle from each and every angle and then provide a solution. You want to think, then you have to provide a solution. So far as the solution is concerned, solution should always be creative in nature, and we should not be a problematic. We should solve the problems inside the society. You want the point? Then, so far as this educational process is concerned, as a as a teacher, what Benjamin Bloom in 1956 has said, he says, Benjamin Bloom, who has given. The concept of taxonomy of educational objectives. Benjamin Broom in 1956 says that a teacher must not go inside the class. We are aspirant teachers. We are teachers, and we must not go to the class unless we will not have certain objectives in mind. What are these objectives which a teacher must have in mind? Known as when he enters. There is one type of behavior among the students. This behavior is it? never. We go to the schools and colleges and even to the universities for ourselves, not for the students. But for ourselves, so far as satisfaction is concerned, we want to we want to be satisfied. 
We want to get satisfaction because we want to impart knowledge to the students and we want to refine the society. So far as micro teaching is concerned, micro teaching is one among the components which makes a teacher accurate. Sir, what did you tell you? It was never. Okay, sir. Micro significant approaches, most important and significant approaches in instructional technology of education. मैं अपना कंप्यूटर लेके आऊँ, सुशील साल चलाओ, सिंपल। नहीं नहीं मेरे को ये आता नहीं ना मैं को ये जो पावर पॉइंट है। मैं वही बोल रहा हूँ, उसमें मुझे आता है सारा। ये टच में थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम है। आपको वहाँ पे वहाँ पे बोलेगा। बस ठीक है, कौन चीज़ करो? ठीक है? हाँ, बस। before we will go to the micro teaching, we must think that how learning takes place. Because you are inside the classroom to make the students to learn. Learning takes place through the interaction. There must be an interaction. Whether it is verbal interaction, it is non-verbal interaction. Interaction is essential for learning. Interaction among what? Among four things. There must be four processes which are being involved to make a child learn. Number one is teacher. Teacher is essential because you are involved in micro-teaching means teacher's role to interact inside the classroom is essential. According to Flander, he says teacher is ineffective. Teacher is ineffective if there is less than 70% interaction of teacher student. Inside the classroom, teacher should only talk 70% and must give chance 30% to the student. If teacher talks about 71%, student 29, 29%, then teacher should make it. So it, there must be an interaction. That's why learning takes place. Interaction among the teacher and then essential. Which, which has to learn, because learning is always a transaction. It is an interaction between natural to immature, between experiences to unexperiences, between knowledgeable to non-knowledgeable. So it is teacher, it is student, it is environment as well, environment of the classroom, according to Thorndike. Thorndike says, there are three laws of learning. Actually, there are two laws of learning. One is primary law, second is secondary law. So far as primary laws are concerned, we have three laws. In primary laws, we have three laws. We have law of readiness. If the child is not ready to learn, he will never learn. So environment plays a dominant role. There must be an interaction of environment as well to make the student to learn. Teacher himself is always in a learning process. According to Tagore, a teacher is never a teacher unless he himself is not learning. So teacher is always also learning. So it is learning takes place through the interaction among students, 
among teachers, among environment, and what they have to learn is a content. Got the point? Then, so next, it is fantasy. Fantasy. I hear, I forget. I see, I remember. I do. I understand. Latest researches in California University. This is a California University file findings. It says that we remember only 20% of what we hear. According to the attention theory given by Atkinson. Attention theory in psychology given by Atkinson. He says that the attention for hearing remains for 21 seconds only. It is 21 seconds. Actually, Atkinson says it is 3 seconds. But it is being amended then. Reach it to the 21 seconds. That hearing can be attended for 21 seconds only. So here again, we remember only 20% of that what we hear. But we remember 30% of that what we see. You want the point? So you, if you see 100%, you will remind and remember only 30% of that. So if you combine them, it becomes 50 percent what we hear and what we see but we remember 90 percent of what we see what we hear and what we do so doing is important because doing itself contains 40 percent doing is essential you are being taught micro teaching inside the classroom if you have not done it it's only 20 percent that you will grade but you are being taught inside the classroom, then you practice it, you do it, so 91% you will get and you will remember this. So, next. It is Burton. So far as teaching is concerned, Burton says, teaching is a process. It is a process of situation. What is situation? Situation again is education. Where student is compelled to answer to give response <coughs> so once you teach means i have an objective from entry behavior to terminal behavior if terminal behavior has occurred means you have responded so teaching is always a process process is a lifelong process you can't you can't do it in one go you have to do it in the cyclical manner again and again you have to come again and again inside the classroom and then you have to attain the goal and it is a stimulation, it's a process of stimulation, it is a process of guidance as well. It is a process of direction as well. And then it is a process of encouragement of learning. That you have to make the student encouraged to learn, you have to guide the student to learn, you have to direct the student to learn, and you have to provide those opportunities in which the student is encouraged and stimulated to give response for learning. Then, it is micro teaching. It is one of the significant approaches. Most significant approach in the area of instructional technology. To make a teacher fit to live inside a society, to have a job, according to M.K. Gandhi. M.K. Gandhi says, teacher should always be by choice and not by chance. It's M.K. Gandhi who says, teacher should always be by choice. Not by chance, but how many of we are born teachers? This is a question. There's a question mark. That how many of we are born teachers? According to a survey conducted in 2009, it's a survey conducted in 2009 in India, says that we are adding 1.4 crore population per year. Adding in India. 1.4 crore means one Australia every year. We are adding to our country. And if we continue to add, Survey says, then we have to appoint two lab teachers additional per year. And how many of them are then born teachers? Because according to Gandhi, teachers should be by choice. By choice means born teachers. How many of we have produced the uh, Taigo and Ubul Kalam Azad? Very few. Does it mean that those teachers who are not born teachers, those teachers who are from by chance, should not be a real teachers? We have a training program. Training programs for them as well. So that if they are by chance here, if I ask you, how many of you have entered into the entrance of MBBS? 50% will raise hands.
So it is a second choice. Beer is a second choice. You are not here by choice. You are here by chance. But to make yourself as choice teachers, you have to have certain techniques through which you have to go and you can be an effective teacher. So for that, micro teaching is one of the most significant approaches which makes a teacher really a real teacher. Real teacher is one teacher who is, even if he is not born teacher, but he becomes a born teacher. Then again, it is teacher education has two components. As we know, we all know it, teacher education has two components. One component is theory of education. This is teacher education. Theory of education means you have papers, you have to qualify papers. How many papers you have? Seven papers. You have to qualify four papers, philosophy or development, psychology, instructional technology, development, two teaching papers, one optional paper. You got the point? Then again, we have practice of education. We have two components, theory papers and then practice of education. Practice of education is generally known as teaching practice or it is student teaching. As a student, you are the trainees, you have to teach in front of the supervisors, in front of the experts, so that suggestions will be given. Then, next, it is student teaching. So far as the second component, student teaching is concerned, we have two approaches. One is global approach, <coughs> traditional approach. So far as this traditional approach is concerned, traditional approach is eclectical <coughs> approach, eclectic approach. Do you know what is eclectic approach? Eclectic approach is you are not trained teachers, but you went to the college, you went to a school, and you are teaching there. You don't know the techniques, but suddenly you, 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 you teach. You got the thing? Global approach or traditional approach is where you are not analyzing the skills. You don't know how to utilize the skill, but suddenly you are a teacher. I, I have a friend, he has done his graduation in law. LLB. Then he was appointed as RP. And then he tried. Now he's a teacher. Doesn't know the techniques. How to, what, what, what skill I have to use and how results can be enhanced. So he is using here a global approach, a traditional approach. Then we have analytical approach in which you analyze things. In which you analyze things. And this is technically known as micro teaching. So micro teaching is at Stanford University, it was at Stanford University, D.W. Allen who coined the term. You know, D.W. Allen was a student of Kerlinger. D.W. Allen was a student of Kerlinger. Kerlinger was a stone cutter. Sankarash. When University of Stanford was in construction, he was working as a stone cutter. He was asked by the then ch uh, chairman of that university, uh, uh, Professor Rutherford, that why I have seen you for several months, that you are working so hard, you are not having a rest. You are working as a stone cutter, but let's have some rest. And then tomorrow you will work again. He said, sir, you know, I am a stone cutter. The stones which I share, and then I construct on the walls, I believe that this wall is a light pole for billions of people for millions of years. So how can I rest? And then he went to the evening colleges, Kerlinger, and then became the chairman of that university. D. Allen was a student of that stone cutter. It is at Stanford University in 1963 when D. W. Allen coined this term, micro teaching. And then it was in 1967. DDPR in India. It was in Government Center for Pedagogical Institute in Havan where DDPR used this term. Then, micro teaching. It is an important innovation. What is its main focus? Micro teaching's focus is that it is an innovation which is being successfully using for developing desirable teaching skills. So, teaching skills are more important. How many skills are there? 
2022. So far as the world conceptual understanding is concerned, from the Indian point of view, it is 16 skills. There are 16 skills from the Indian point of view, and there are 22 skills from the world point of view. But when you talk about the DWLN, we have to think about 22 skills. So basic thing is each and every skill should be accredited by the teacher and for that there must be a training program and micro teaching is a training program. It is the skills. Then it aims at modifying the behavior of student teacher according to the specified objectives. There are certain objectives. One objective at one time skill of reinforcement must be developed this is a specified objective and then behavioral modification of a teacher takes place so how dw allen defined this micro teaching he says micro teaching is a scaled down teaching encounter what encounter is a question teaching encounter means we have four types of teachings how many four, four types of teachings one is mega teaching you might have not heard this. One is mega teaching, second is meso teaching, third is macro teaching, and fourth is micro teaching. These are the four teachings. Why micro teaching is an encounter? Because at one side you have mega teaching, at the other side you have micro teaching. Where is in between an encounter? You want to develop the skill of one teacher. You have the hundreds of teachers in your country. So there is an encounter. You have had a small duration of time, six minutes, but in general you have 30 minutes. So it's an encounter. You have number of skills to be implemented inside the classroom. Here you are working on one skill. It's an encounter. You got the point? So you have five students, you have hundreds of students. It's an encounter. So it's an encounter in terms of class size and class time. So in micro teaching, next it is Pasi and Lalita who define micro teaching as a single concept, teaching a single concept. Micro teaching is to teach a single concept. It is not you are having number of concepts and then you are teaching in a micro class. It's of duration of six minutes, means you have to take one teaching concept with using specified teaching skill, one teaching skill, and then a small number of students in the of time. Now, this is the definition given by Lalita and Pasi. Then, again, first teaching encounter is eventful. If I ask you, stand up and deliver, can you? If I ask any one of you, stand and then deliver, if it is his first, it's eventful. Shyness, trembling, and other things. Once you go to the real classroom, there must not be any shyness. I have seen a teacher who taught me when I was in a college. He was so trembling that he put his books like this. And then he was reading the books. So, first teaching encounter is eventful. Once it is eventful, because there are problems that the teacher has to face. So, to rectify the problems, there must be a stamina development, and it's a micro teaching which develops the stamina that how can you be a successful teacher. Then, next, it is nine features given by Ellen and Rion. Ellen and Rion has given that there are many features of micro teaching. First is real teaching. You know, micro teaching can be done in two ways. One, it can be done in a simulation. Do you know what is simulation? Simulation is where the teacher trainees become the students, take the role of students. Is one. Number two, you have real students. So whether it is real students or it is teacher trainees who play the role of real students, it is a teaching. You are actually trying to teach them so that you can have an understanding of a skill. And then it is reduces complex things. Why? What is the main feature of micro teaching? Why you are doing this? Because whatever the problems that in teaching profession is, we must have to reduce those complex things. And then third training of accomplishment. Accomplishment means a perfect teacher. Accomplishment means born teacher. Even if you are not born, 
You want to become Goan. For that, you need training. And this micro teaching is a teaching program in which accomplishment of training is taken place. Then it is individualized training. And individualized training means one teacher can come and deliver. That he is being demonstrated. He is being evaluated. Given feedback. Rectifies the errors. Reinforces the effect to instances, etc. And then its immediate feedback is given and then control over the class as well as practice. You have the control over your practice. What you are going to do, what you are going to deliver, what you are going to attain from the students, you can attain. If a proper procedure of micro teaching is being taken place. Then it is phases of micro teaching. This is Clift. It is Clift. Who has, says who says that there are three phases of micro teaching. The first phase is knowledge acquisition phase. What is knowledge? What is knowledge? Knowledge is a philosophical issue. It is in the area of epistemology. And in the area of epistemology, it is any justified true belief is knowledge. Any Justified true belief. It is not me, it is John Hosper who gave this definition. Any justified belief becomes a knowledge. So knowledge acquisition phase is you must have a justified belief for yourself. Whether you can do it or you cannot do it. It is knowledge acquisition phase. First phase, so far as Cliff is concerned, this is also known as pre-active phase. You are not active inside the classroom. You are be before what you are doing. You are acquiring knowledge. It is pre-active phase. Here, you have two things to do. One, you observe the demonstration of experts. You want to develop a reinforcement skill. What is reinforcement? We have four types of reinforcement. We have verbal positive reinforcement. We have non-verbal positive reinforcement. We have verbal negative reinforcement. We have non-verbal negative reinforcement. These are the four. Anyone you want, or you have question, skill of question. You, whatever you want to acquire, first of all, you observe the demonstration of experts. How they do it? Those who are real teachers, or those who are experts in this. You demonstrate. Once you demonstrate, then second you analyze and discuss demonstration. You want to clarifications because after this you have to do it. So once you observe first the demonstration given by the experts, then you analyze different things. You analyze on the basis of the video tapes. You analyze on the basis of the ratings. You, you get clarifications and then you discuss the demonstration. Then comes second phase and the second phase is skill acquisition phase. And in this skill acquisition phase, this phase is also known as interactive phase. This is more important. This phase is more important because this is countable. You have to acquire a skill and for this you prepare a lesson plan on the basis of the demonstration given by the expert. Once you prepare a lesson plan, then you enter into the classroom and deliver. Once you deliver, you practice skill and then you evaluate performance. How was my performance? If it is not okay, then again we go ahead, we reach. For reteach, we have to replan. Again, prepare a lesson plan, practice, evaluate performance. Again, if not accountable. Again, you have to go reteach because it is a cyclical approach. Unless your performance is not reached to the apex, you cannot reach it. You cannot, you cannot leave the skill. You want to acquire the skill and you can acquire it only by having repeat it again and again, transfer it again and again, practice it again and again. And then we have third phase, third phase which is the transfer phase. Transfer phase is once repeating and repeating is over, means you have acquired the skill. That it is essential that you can acquire the skills and then you can transfer them into the real teaching. Once you are, inshallah, being made the teachers, you are being appointed as teachers, at that moment, what the skills that you have developed during the micro teaching, once you entertain them inside the classrooms, this is the transfer phase. So, our steps of micro teaching. First step, 
of micro teaching is particular skill to be practiced is explained to the people teacher to the trend is being explained who will explain this it is the expert who is having mastery over the skill will explain the skill to be practiced by the trainer. It is the first step. So he must be very much conscious while explaining that there must not be any kind of deviations. It's one. Then second, second phase. Yes. The teacher training is given the demonstration of the skill. Is given demonstration. It is not the teacher training. It is the expert who gives them demonstration. First, he explains. Then the expert demonstrates the skill to the trainee. You got the thing. So he demonstrated the skill, and then after third, it is the third stage. Third step is the he plans the lesson, and then on the basis of the demonstrated, what the demonstration has been done by the expert, he plans the lesson. And once he plans the lesson, then fourth stage comes, that then he teaches. The teacher trainee teaches the lesson. He teaches the lesson to a small group of people. People means real students. If not available, if people are not available, students are not available, then the other trainees play the role of students. If students are available, then his lesson is supervised by the supervisor and expert with peers. So three categories there. Number one, there are students. Number two, there is expert. And number three, there are peers as well. If students are not available, you can do it with two categories. You have supervisor and then you have peers. Then it is the fifth phase on the basis of the observation of the lesson. Because there are observers, peers, Students are not observers. Students cannot evaluate. Because if you have real students reading in class fifth, so how can they observe? There are two categories of observers. One, you have expert, you have supervisor, and you have peers. So the observation of the lesson is being done, and feedback is given. And once feedback is given, means two types of feedbacks. Number one, reinforce the effective instances. When you were effective, positive. <coughs> Those things were being reinforced and then draws attention to the ineffective or weak points. Where, where the student was weak, there was drawing attention by the feedback. And then again, it is sixth. In the light of the feedback, the teacher training replants. You got the thing? Replants. First, skill was explained, then was demonstrated by expert. Then there was planning, then teaching. there was teaching, then feedback. feedback, and then you are replanning. Once you replan the lesson on the basis of the feedback, and then you try to rectify the weak points, you try to rectify the errors inside the classroom. So, for rectifying the classroom, you have to replan the lesson, and then again you have the seventh one, and the seventh one is the revised lesson is taught to another comparable group of students. Now, those students who were already there, 5 to 10, should not be not again there. Because you, can, you cannot repeat them. You got the thing? Yes, students. If you have 6 students from class 6, for first time, once you teach them, now there should be another group of that very much class, but not that student, which were earlier there. Because, because they, feel, uh, they will feel it bad. That's why I am being teaching again and again the same. What is the problem in the teacher? So for the respectability of the teacher, you must have a new comparable group. So once you have a new comparable group, you revise the lesson, you taught the lesson to the group, and then again, there will be again a feedback. Next, sir. The supervisor observes the repeat lesson and gives free feedback on the basis of the sound arguments and reasons. Now again, there must be sound reasons and arguments. Whenever there is arguments for the second time, it must be sound. And we believe that there must be alterations and there must be improvements in teaching. So when there is improvements in teaching, means there is always an enhancement of teaching and it is refinement in teaching. 
Then again, it is the last one, the repeat, repeat, repeat cycle. Maybe repeat it several times. Unless we will not attain the apex. It's essential. That we have to attain the apex. We have to attain the mastery over the entire skill. It can be repeated again and again. So we have a cycle, sir, next. We have a cycle. It's a micro teaching cycle. So first of all, you have a plan which, is, which doesn't have any time. You have a plan. You can take time you need. One hour, two hours, one day, two day for planning. Yes. Then once you go to the teach, it is the second stage. Then third stage is feedback. you will get feedback. Feedback from who? Supervisor. Feedback from the supervisor and the peer ratings known as observation shuru. Peer ratings known as observation shuru. And then the errors 